This call is now being this recorded. This is Global Tel Link. You have a prepaid call from Silas Johnson. An inmate at the Sentinella State Prison, Sentinella, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. You have a prepaid call. You will not be charged for this call. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using Global Tel Link. Thank you for calling me back. So uh, you get sentenced. How long do you sit it? How long? How long you sit in county for before you catch the chain up state? And then uh, you also mentioned you ended up in uh, Salinas, Salinas Valley. Yeah, yeah. That was. Uh, I went to North Kern Reception, Delano, but uh, I went to Salinas. Salinas Valley was my first prison. And at that time, how was Salinas Valley, Valley at this time? Uh, you. Uh, what, what was uh, when, when you get when you go to reception and and they assess you uh, for for your points? Uh, how many points did you did you uh, did you win? <laughs> I had uh, seventy seven points. I came to prison with seventy seven points, and I just went to committee last month and got my points reduced from two hundred twenty five to two hundred thirteen. And 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 uh, how does somebody amass those type of points? Uh, you gotta you gotta commit violent acts. You gotta commit serious violent acts to to amass points. Um, I think uh, I caught I caught uh, this most the, the lion's share of my points I caught between. Um, 2004 and 2009. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I was involved in in several stabbing incidents, um, three separate stabbing incidents. Um, the last one on my cellmate in Corker Shoe in 2009. And uh, I think you get like maybe 38 points or something like that. Realist, realistically speaking, here to get down to a, a level one or a level two, how many years or how many lifetimes would it take you to get down those two hundred plus points down to get you down to one of the lower levels? Well, I think a, a level one is what like a, it's, I think it's like what nineteen points or something like that. So, I mean, I have two hundred thirteen. You get if you're working and if you're programming. You get 12 points off a year. So, I mean, what, that's 10 years would be 120. Yeah. So, I guess, uh, About I guess 20 years? Just under, just under 20 years, 20 ish years clean without any disciplinary, without any write ups. And 20 years, I could make it, you know. Be about 65, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so it's easy to get it's easy to accumulate these points but it, it it's like impossible to to, oh, yeah. to to undo the damage yeah I mean just I mean I've just made five years clean you know uh, the last write up I had was a a, a weed a dirty weed test you know I was smoking weed and got in 2018 and I've been clean five years and and I still have 213 points and, you know, so there's a lot of people like you in there, right? Like, where they admit the amass uh, an astronomical uh, um, amount of points. And uh, I've only seen one person with this with more points than me. I met and, one and, person. And if you don't mind sharing, how many uh, how many points was that? Like three sixty eight, which is ridiculous. My points are ridiculous. 368 is, is just, I mean, game over. So, w with those type of points right now, what, what you're sitting at a, at a level 4 yard right now? No, I'm, I'm on a level 3, but they have what you call an override. So, if you're disciplinary free for a couple of years, then regardless of your points, they'll give you an opportunity 
to program at a lower level. So on paper, I'm still a level four, but I'm able to be housed here on an override because I've been, I've been, in, in, in essence, I, I have good behavior. So then I've sustained it. But one right up, and I'm on a bus out of here. And, and mentally, what does being in level three yard opposed to a level four yard, what does it do for you? What, what, what state of mind are you in? It's a world of difference. I mean, they just ran yards just a minute ago, and people are outside. Like, I've, I've the yard is till 9 o'clock. I've stayed out until 8.58, like 9 o'clock. Like, I've, I've seen the stars, I've seen the moon, and, you know, out, you, the night breeze, and just, I mean, just, just things like, you know, I'm a night owl, so I sit here at my window and look out the window, and, you know, just things that, that you take for granted on a level four yard, or maximum security prison, or, or a shoe, you're not going outside after what? I mean, if you go into like a program, a self-help program now, you'll be out, you know, but before, I mean, you, you're not being outside. You're not. You're not going to be outside and see the night sky unless you have a medical emergency and you don't want to see it there. And I have a question. Um, all these points that you amassed were they were they because you were defending yourself, or what's the reason be, behind the number of, of points that, that that you got? Is there like a good reason behind it? There's no good reason behind it. It's just, just, just dumb gangland and prison politics and my ego. That's it. Not one confrontation, not one physical confrontation in here. Can I honestly say that I had to protect myself and it was either him or me? Maybe we had a riot with the northern Mexicans and in 2008 on Corcoran Shoe Yard. So, okay, I, I can cite that one. But I have three separate stashes. I have a battery. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. I've committed cell extractions. You know, I've, there's, there's nothing in here. I mean, two percentile out of the rest of the 98 that, you know, that... I couldn't help with them. I couldn't help. Everything else was my own doing, you know. And and it wasn't a. It was either him or me. It was, you know, I took the initiative, you know, and chose to commit violence on another human being because I couldn't work out my emotions in a more sophisticated way besides harming someone. So, in in prison standards. You would be known as you're with the business. Yeah, as prison, as prison goes, as prison standards go. So you were excelling. You were excelling in uh, the prison, uh, the prison shenanigans, if one would say. I was, I was, I grew to be somebody that that was that was pretty feared. Um, but the bottom line, the bottom line is, is that if when you become the type of person where your default is just to harm someone. I mean, you, you you're not really worth that much as a human being. You know, I didn't value I didn't value other people because I didn't value myself. And the minute I began to value myself, I began to be able to value other human beings. And so, you know, I, I'm I'm regretful, you know, for harming people and doing the things that I did. You know, I. I you know, I, I impacted people's lives, and you know, and, and and maybe they're still being affected. I, I you know, there's no free way for me to know, you know, and, and the only way that I can remediate that harm is just by moving forward and and not harming anyone else. And, and do you recall when you when you had that pivotal moment, when you had that epiphany, and you you probably thought thought to yourself, well, like, what am I doing? What, what transpired? What what happened? What what caused that change? I think the beginning, 
the beginning of it was in somewhere in the middle of a five and a half year stand in Corcoran shoe. Um, I was in the cell by myself because I, I had stabbed myself. So there was no one else I could harm. Um, I was being chained in controlled movement, being walked from one cage to the next. And I didn't understand why I was so angry. I didn't understand. You know, and that, that was that was scary for me, you know. And so one night I, I just sat there and I listed a whole bunch of things about myself that I knew. And I was trying to listen things about myself, you know, as far as my, my goals and, you know, like, what did I want to do with this whole gang thing? Like, what was the mission statement? I didn't know, you know. What did I hope to accomplish from this? I didn't know. Um, what were my goals and my dreams and ambitions? I didn't know. You know, why, why was I so angry? I didn't know. Who the hell are you? I didn't know. You know, and, and, and those things scared me. It's scary to ask yourself questions about yourself that you should know that your character will provide you. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. If you do introspection, and it's scary to ask yourself questions and, and not know, you know, and I had to start start answering some of those questions and start having some, you know, some, some self-conversations with myself and, and trying to figure out, you know, who I wanted to be, you know, because I didn't know who I was. I, I, I had no character. I was just this thing that I constructed, you know, for public perception. And so for me, that was a catalyst, and I started writing. And I started writing essays. I started writing poetry. I uh, started reading everything I could get my hands on. And uh, in particular, a book that, that impacted me was uh, a psychologist, uh, Sheldon B. Cop. Uh, if you meet the Buddha on the road, kill him. I mean, that book just was, like, so transformative for me. It, it just, for an old Jewish psychologist to have the insight in, in the humanity in that book, it, it just it just made me see that the things that I was experiencing, even as a, a black gang member, that that I was not that far removed from everybody else, that everyone has struggles, everyone has anger, Everyone has angst about their existence and wonder what the hell is this thing about. And it gave me it gave me some inspiration, you know, to to try and put one foot in front of the other and, and change things for myself. And um writing. Writing saved my life. You know, being able to get those things feelings out and to express them um, was was just cathartic for me. And um yeah, so I just I just started writing like crazy and amassed a bunch of writings. And um, when I came down here to Sentinella in 2017, I looked at every looked at it and and I decided that I can actually do something with it. And so I put together the poems and and I released my first book last year, a book of poetry, A River's Light in the Barren Tunnel. And so that writing for me and being alone and having the time and space to actually do some introspection and and, and look at myself, strip myself down and, and reveal myself was 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 kind of the catalyst to to begin to change things. It wasn't just like a finger snap. You know, there was a there was an escalation into my criminality and into my violence. You have sixty seconds remaining. I didn't wake up as a twenty two year old and roll out of bed and say you know, I'm just gonna go kill somebody today. There was there was a build up to that. And likewise, with my de escalation of criminality to where I am now, to where I can say that I'm not a gang member, I'm not a criminal, you know, I'm not even a prisoner. You know? I'm a sentient human being who, who resides in a prison. So it it's been a process. And that's deep. 